I'm the Regional Director of the Minority Business Assistance Center. Today is advanced video conferencing. Joshua Reed, who is the CEO and founder of Influ, is facilitating the workshop today as he is going to be facilitating all of the workshops from now until the end of June every Wednesday. So I do appreciate you showing up today to participate in this. I, I know you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be engaging. Joshua never fails to uh, meet that expectation. His uh, presentation today is not just about lectures, but it's going to be engaging. So get get ready to be engaged, get ready to participate. We're going to have a fun morning. And so let's jump in. It's, it's one minute after 11. Good morning to all of you that I did not write a special message to this morning. So good morning to all of you for joining us. And I'm going to kick this over to Joshua Reed, CEO and founder of Influ. And he's gonna tell you a little bit about himself and kick off advanced video conferencing. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Ms. Deborah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, excited to be back here on a Wednesday morning, uh, right before lunchtime. So, uh, as Ms. Deborah shared, you know, I'm the founder and CEO of a tech company uh, headquartered downtown uh, called Influ. And uh, we are a software company where we automate it, social media marketing, captions, content. Um, in, in essence, your whole entire marketing in under three minutes for the entire month. Uh, so if you guys would like to try it out, we're uh, letting people use it for free. Um, uh, beta users, you can go to influ.com, I-N-P-H-L-U.com. You can sign up, no payment information required. And give us your feedback. We're doing new enhancements and development on a weekly basis. Um, right now we're in 60 different industries. Uh, and yeah, it's going, it's going pretty well. So uh, we would love to have you use it, try it out, and uh, give us your feedback so we can make it even better. So today, today is fun because we get to step into that creative space, um, which is how I even got, you know, part of how I got started in entrepreneurship about six and a half years ago uh, to where, you know, um, I was hiring people to do our photography and videography and, uh, but the turnaround time was just too long, right? Like the moment is now, it's hot now. I wanna be able to edit it and get it out. If not tonight, then latest tomorrow morning, as opposed to waiting for two weeks um, to get something that maybe took someone an hour and a half to do. And so uh, I went and studied and invested and learned how to do it myself and became pretty good at it. And then eventually opened a digital social media marketing agency um, that became pretty, pretty, I did pretty well, worked with a lot of big code companies and we did everything in house. Uh, but it all started with me buying a Sony, you know, full frame camera and just kind of scaling up from there. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to take your Zoom video conferencing to the next level. So this is advanced, all right? So I do wanna do a disclaimer that um, if you're someone that is still not sure how to start Zoom, and some may be laughing at that, but that is the case, but that's what we're here for because we show people how to do that. So I'm not I'm not speaking in negative terms. I'm just saying, if you're someone that's still trying to figure out how to get started in Zoom, then this class may be, um, this may be a little bit advanced for you uh, because if you're in this class, I'm assuming you're someone that knows how to do Zoom, knows how to schedule a meeting, knows how to create a webinar, um, where we're gonna be going over that very, very uh, high level. We're not gonna get too detailed on that. We're gonna be diving in how to take that Zoom meeting to the next level. So if you attended, uh, Ms. Debris and I, uh, we did a, a startup, Start Your Own Business Bootcamp. It was a two-day bootcamp. And that, I really took it to the next level. I had sound effects, I had graphics, I had microphones coming left and right. And, and I want to show you how I was doing that. Okay, so that's what today is about. But before I jump in, I want to do a quick post check. I hope you got your coffee. I got my ginger tea and probiotics. Um, how's everyone feeling today? Are you feeling good? It's the middle of the week. You know, I'm getting charged up. I got my producer vest on. I'm in the zone. How are you feeling? Use your keyboard. It's, that, it's those buttons right in front of you. You can say I'm doing good, I'm not doing too well, you know, type it in the chat, let me know so we can move forward. We're on a tight schedule, we got 55 minutes left. See people still trying to get, get it together. The sun is shining, so I'm doing very well. Okay, okay, thank you. Maria, yes. Oh, Marla, I'm sorry, get my eyes together. Uh, who is Sunny, ready to go? Okay, all right, bet. let's get to it. So I'm gonna share my screen. 
And as Ms. Deborah shared, you know, I do like to do this. Where'd y'all go? Okay, there you go. Got screens everywhere. So I do like to do this. Um, I'm not really a lecture type, but for reference, I got a few slides so I can show you the equipment, a breakdown of the equipment. I put together a diagram to show you how I connected the equipment. And then I'm gonna be taking you through a live demonstration of the software. I'm gonna be flipping back and forth between different cameras so you can see the difference. Right now I'm just using, I am using a Mac, um, a MacBook Pro in case anyone is wondering. So today I'm gonna to be talking about equipment, which is very important. So I am on a MacBook Pro um, and I'm using the FaceTime camera on the MacBook Pro. But in a demonstration, I'm gonna be shifting to a, a, um, a DSLR camera or a Sony camera. Some people have Canon. You got Panasonic, you know, there's a number of, you got Nikon, you got a number of different brands out there, but whichever you feel is a, a good preference for you. Um, and also budget wise, it should work just fine. Okay. So here we are in advanced video conferencing presented to you by the Cincinnati Minority Business Assistance Center powered by Influ. And as we move forward, I'm going to be referencing reviews in the chat. And what I'm asking to do is if you're enjoying this content, if you're pleased with the presentation, if you see the information is valuable, please let that reflect in the chat area because we don't send out formal surveys, uh, but we do collect the chat and we go back and we review to see what people, questions people are asking, what you're saying, how you're responding. And we use that to continue to scale up these webinars moving forward. We started with 11 last year. We had five-star ratings and we upped it. Now we had 19. You know, we want to take this thing on up to 30 because there's a lot of information out there that we have access to. And the more we can equip you with it, then the more effective you can be and the more money you can keep in your pocket as opposed to hiring people to do something that we can teach you how to do yourself. That's the business that we're in, okay? So here's the agenda. So this course will teach you some important tips to ensure your video conference runs smoothly and effectively. The topics we're gonna cover, number one is choosing the right software. So right now we're all in Zoom, but I'm gonna be connecting Zoom with a software called Ecamm, E-C-A-M-M, -M. don't worry. I got the logo on the next slide and I'll also tell you how much it costs per month. I'm choosing the right equipment. So I'm breaking everything down. I'm talking to you about cameras, microphones, switchboards, you know, cables and cores, whether it's XLR cables, whether it's HDMI, micro HDMI, uh, micro USB, iRigs. I'm gonna break everything down and tell you what they're used for. And then I have a diagram that's gonna show you how to connect it as well. And then I'm gonna show you a lot of demonstration of how it all works together. So it's almost like here are the ingredients, here's what each ingredient is, here's how you put them together, here's how long it takes to bake the cake, and then here's the cake and then I'm giving out samples, okay? As you can see, um, I have scheduling your first meeting as a beginner and how to set up a webinar as a beginner. I slashed those out because that is, we've already done that before. Um, and you know, if you're here, that means you already know how to do that. So I don't wanna waste your time and be redundant. Uh, but so we're gonna breeze through that part, but it's all relative. Then I wanna show you how to integrate meetings and webinars with the Ecamm Live. So how do you go from, <clears throat> how do you connect the two softwares together how do you get what you're doing in Ecamm to reflect into your Zoom meeting? And, you know, it's it's by the click of a button. So, um, but getting there is the part that we have to spend a little time on. Adding graphics and sound effects to your webinar, and then how to professionally add an interview guest live into your webinar. So, you know, in, in Zoom, how do you add somebody? You just send them your invite link. But it's very, uh, it's very limited, right? So with Ecamm, you can get you can have, you know, graphics, sound effects. You can have their a lower third, you know, their name pop up at the bottom. Um, you can put their social media handles. You can get you can get real creative, and everyone's gonna be wondering, you know, why does your webinar like you're on a Zoom call, but your Zoom camera looks so far advanced than everyone else in there, and they all asking how do you do it, and it's because you came to this webinar. So you know, we also enjoy uh, thank yous every now and again. So. House rules, interact with the webinar. So we start out asking you how you felt. Some of you responded, you know, maybe some of you, your fingers are a little tight, um, but hopefully they'll loosen up as we move forward. Ask questions, right? It's the whole point that you're here. Inback is paying for all of this. So it's not costing you a dime. But the thing is, often when things are free, um, just by nature, we don't typically take full advantage of it. Um, it's only when we're paying for something, right? But here, I hope that's not the case because you're getting access to information I don't know if you've ever been to a master class, but those class cost thousands of dollars to get this information I'm giving to you right now. Thousands of dollars. There's the reason why you have photographers and practitioners. They teach you how to do this stuff, but they also charge to teach you how to do it. 
not knocking the game. I understand the business model and it works. But MBAC has paid for you to get this information at, at a cost of zero to you. So take full advantage and ask questions that we're here for. I've been doing this for a while. I'm pretty good at it. And um, if I don't know something I won't pretend to know, I would just direct you to the person who can help you. And then don't be hard on yourself, be patient. You know, I, like I said, I've been doing this for a while. Um, I know a little about a lot, which is very dangerous because we're in a world where that is more beneficial than knowing a lot about a little. And, uh, but it took me a while to get here. So just be patient. This is on demand. This is recorded. So if you don't get it today, you can always come back and watch it. Okay. So we're right on schedule. we got 50 minutes left. Let's get to it. First on the agenda is choosing the right software. And I think we have somebody in the chat taking notes, but we'll get, but we'll get notes. All right. I like that. Let's go. Um, so choosing the right software and to Marla's point, if you have a question, just drop it in the chat, be going back and forth from chat to Q and a, and I'll be going back and forth from the presentation to here. So Ecamm live, it's a video conferencing software, right? It's good for people that are doing live streams to Facebook, you know, LinkedIn, YouTube, and they also have a feature where you can integrate it to your zoom. And whatever you're doing in Ecamm, you can have a reflect. So you see what you see in my camera right now. You can have whatever you're doing in Ecamm show up in your Zoom uh, profile video. And I'm going to show you how that works. So these are the two softwares that we're going to be using today. And how to integrate is very simple and straightforward. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, choosing the right equipment. So here's a diagram of all the equipment that I'm using today. Again, this is advanced, okay? So if you don't get it, come back, go do your research, um, you know, kind of do some, one thing I like to do to say, if you're not frugal, you're being wasteful and, you know, you wanna make sure you're using equipment that is within your budget. Um, this is all professional grade equipment. This is all the equipment that I'm gonna be demonstrating today. So I'm using what I have in case you want to know. Um, but there are also alternatives to what is on the screen right here, as far as like the microphones, um, the ATM minis, I think there's entry level, then there's pro grade level. So uh, I would definitely recommend sticking to the ATM, but the Shure SM7B microphone, the headphones, you can find an alternative, the Sony camera, you can find an alternative and the tripod and the ring light. So the one I would say is a staple here is the ATM mini and the iRig Pre. So the iRig Pre, this is what you're going to be using to connect your um, condensing microphone or whichever microphone you choose to have uh, to your computer, all right? This is gonna show that it's getting the right power and that way you get the right bass. You can control your gain, which is what you see right here. Your 48 volts on and off. Some mics require 48 volt power, so you can just flip it on and your mic will work. So if, if you have a mic that requires 48 volts of power to actually operate, then that's usually a, a professional grade microphone and it's not working when you plug it up, it's probably because this is off. So once you flip it on, then you should see that pop up. This is a red light come on and you're good to go. Um, and then how this works is on this end, it's an XLR cable that you will plug in your microphone, one end of the XLR cable into this iRig, the other part of the XLR cable into your condensing microphone, which is what you see right here. So this is the XLR cable, right? Don't worry, I'm gonna be showing you. And um, on the other end, you have your micro USB that goes into your laptop and then you have your headphone cord um, so you can hear what you're actually saying and you can hear what people are saying when they're speaking to you. Well, the next is a diagram. I'll show you how it all works. I just want to explain and break it down. But here's where we have our ATM mini switcher. Now this is, you know, this is what like newsrooms are using for the much bigger switchboards. So here's where they've taken that huge switchboard and they have condensed it down into this powerful device where you can control up to four different cameras. So you see one, two, three, four. So maybe out a camera set up on the left, one on the right, and all you have to do is just hit the one or two to switch it. And um, and you can all do it while you're on your MacBook. And I'm, you know, I'm doing everything while I'm talking, I'm hitting the buttons and cameras are switching angles. And you're like, man, who's doing that? I'm just, you can't see it, but I'm doing it right here myself. So um, yeah, but I'll be showing you that as well. Now here's where you have your power. This is where you have a USB out. Now how it works, right, is the ATM Mini is working as a webcam. 
Now, without the ATM Mini, you have to get several different adapters and devices for things to connect to your computer. But the problem is when you when you don't use the ATM Mini, you use a different device like a, a Black Magic Mini recorder, where it requires your computer to power it. When you're trying to hook up multiple devices, what happens is it's slowing your computer down, right? Because it's using a lot of resources. Your, your computer is using a lot of resources to process everything. And what you risk is that your computer may freeze up or maybe a little lag and then your stream is lagging. And then at times your computer can overheat, then it just freeze and it ruins your, it ruins your entire stream and you have to restart. But at that point, whoever was watching, they done moved on. Right, so the ATM Mini, what it's doing is it's controlling everything inside of this black box and it's, it's outputting it through a simple USB-C cable. And so on your computer, you see it as a webcam. And so now all your computer's processing is the webcam as opposed to processing four different professional grade cameras, the cuts, the switching, the phase, the black, you know, how you're transitioning from one camera to the next. Um, it's doing all that in this black box and the only, the only work that your computer has to do is just feeding in this webcam. It's that simple. So this device, it'll run you about, uh, I believe the intro level is about $499. Um, but it is a definitely a great investment if you're someone that's getting into podcasting or blogging, you just want to take your production to the next level. Then you have your Shure SM7B microphone. So if you're someone that ever watched like The Breakfast Club or you watch Joe Rogan podcast, you know, they're all using this same microphone right here. Um, this is the one that I use as well. It's just a really good microphone and it's good right out the box. Right. If you want to get a little bit more in tune with adjusting, you know, the decibels and the, and the, the acoustics of the mic, you can do that. But the Shure SM7B is perfect right outside of the box and it really takes your audio to the next level. So while I'm here, let me just do a, let's just go ahead and do a quick sample of what I'm talking about. Test, test, test. All right, so you hear me now, right? Then let me go and switch it over. All right, test, test, test. Can everyone hear me, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to advanced video conferencing. You notice the difference, right? So it's, it's much more broadcast, podcaster style. Um, and and yeah, so the, you know these microphones are top of the line. And I, I definitely recommend, I think it's a great investment. And when you're doing your podcast, or you're doing your Zoom meetings and they see you, you you know, you drop one of these into the camera, they know you're serious about your business. So, um, but yeah, so I just want to show you what it's going to look like. Okay. So let me switch back over to my computer audio. Get that right back up here. Yeah, yeah, you do. So when I'm doing things, you know, like um, when I'm on panels or if we're doing like the boot camp um, where I'm more in the camera. So when we're doing a webinar, it's more about the content, less about you watching me speak. So I'm not putting all the bells and whistles into it. But when I'm on a panel discussion or if I'm doing a keynote virtually, I'm bringing out all the, you know, I'm, I'm giving them something they haven't seen before because very few people will put this amount of effort into their presentation virtually. Right, so this is my suit. This is my tie. This is my pocket square. You know, this is the cufflinks in in the in the you know the briefcase in the fresh cut. All this is that for me. Okay, so I want to show you how to do the same thing when they invite you to come and speak, and they're like, "Wow, I didn't think I was gonna get all of that." So, all right, let me go back here. And then the headphones I just had on; those are the Audio Technicas uh, M50X. Um, these are uh, pro grade quality. And these are often what people that do sound engineering, right. Or, um, or, or vocals, they listen to this. They're, they're really good. They, they really lock in the sound and what you can hear. Um, you know, if you're doing, if you're into that type of stuff, but you know, you don't have to get audio technical because these are just what I'm using. There's other headphones that will work, you know, good. Uh, maybe not as good as audio technicals. There's some that even work even better. But you know, I think this is a good like mid grade uh, between like entry and then and then pro. And then the DSLR camera that I'm using 
um, is I have a Sony right now for today's example, using a Sony a seven R two, uh, which is a four frame mirrorless camera. And then the lens I have on it is a, is a 24 to 70, um, aperture 2.8. And, and for those who are like in the aperture and, and shutter speed, this isn't a, a photography webinar by, by any means, but aperture is, you know, being able to blur out the background when your subject is in focus. So this is what I'm using for today's example. And then the tripod this is the, the Manfrotto tripod. Um, this is a top line product. They got, you know, I think this is a good tripod, you know, with a nice, um, this is the ideal head that you're using if you want to be able to just slowly pan your camera. But if your camera just sitting stationary, you probably don't need this. You can use a simple ball head, which is something you can just move it where you need it, lock it in, and then go sit down and do your thing. Joshua. Right? Yes. Um, Marlene has a question. She said, if you are sponsoring a webinar and have guest speakers, do you recommend an audio pack or list to provide to ensure they are presentable? Yeah, you know, that's a, when you have guest speakers, you're taking a gamble because um, not everybody has the equipment to to do it. And, and you know, if you have a certain standard, may, not every maybe not everybody meets that standard and it has a lot to do with the type of equipment that they're using, right? So somebody can have a laptop with a camera on it, but the camera is not that great of quality. Um, so it really has a lot to do with what they have in a the receiving end. But as far as I recommend an audio pack, a list to provide, I would definitely recommend that. Um, and then even in a sense, you know, I don't know what the guest speaker is because when you have a list of recommendations, you wanna make sure there's a disclaimer. This is a list of recommendations not required because that can often intimidate people too. Well, if they look at this long list of, of, of equipment that will make that guest speaker look presentable and they don't have the means that, to access it, you know, that could tailor the discussion. So, um, but I, I definitely recommend and listen, just have a disclaimer, just saying, hey, here's what we're recommending. I'm um, just to put you in the best presentable way uh, for, the, for the PBIB viewing your speech. Um, but I would definitely recommend that, yes. Um, and then here's another thing too. You're, I know you ever seen like a makeup artist where they always have perfect lighting on their face um, and they're doing tutorials. Um, yeah, possibly suggest meeting with them to see how they pick. Yeah, absolutely. You always want to do a test run. Always want to do a test run before jumping into the game, um, especially virtually. Because like I said, this is technology. Things happen, things crash. You know, computers overheat, they freeze. You, you know, some... Sometimes the computer just wants to update in the middle of it, didn't even ask you for permission. So you want to make sure that everything is already tested out. And therefore, in the showtime, it's really just hitting the record button and, get, and getting into it. So um, always do a test run when you're doing virtual uh, presentations or virtual seminars. You know, when we did the virtual seminar with MBAC last year, we did 10 different dry runs just to make sure that it would work on the day of because you had so many different people involved. Um, but as far as getting that, that lighting, you know, on the face, like with the makeup artist tutorial videos, uh, ladies, you know, or fellas, if you ever watch them, um, this is what they're using. They're called ring lights. You can find them fairly inexpensive on Amazon. I have a ring light right here in front of me. You'll see it as well when I go to the next camera. And, uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend getting you a ring light so you always have good lighting on, on your face, okay? Then like, cause if I turn mine off right now, you see a huge difference, right? And then if I turn it on, I look a little bit more crisp. You know, you can see I've been drinking my water, you know, so yeah. Now let's get to the diagram. Now I wanna show you how it all works before we jump into the example, okay? Any questions before I go into the diagram? Any questions or any of the equipment that I just shared? You put it in the Q&A or simply you drop it in the chat area. Any question on equipment, uh, maybe questions on alternative recommendations, maybe where to get this, these products, any questions? Where do you recommend getting them, getting the products, Joshua? Yeah, I recommend, um, I will go between 
you know, products like this, I don't buy on, I, I love Amazon, don't get me wrong, but products like this, I don't buy on Amazon. And the reason why is because when you're buying something like, a, you know, one of these cameras, right, that cost a few thousand dollars, um, when they're shipping, you know, people throwing the box, it's hitting the ground, you know, they're probably not handling the shipping as much as you would like something that you're spending that amount of money on. So I would recommend going somewhere like a Best Buy um, or you have, you know, if you're someone that's in Cincinnati, um, my friends over at Dodd Camera, they they really take good care of, uh, the, you know, at least me and the people I send there. They always take good care of you. Pro Cam, Pro Cam is another one for camera equipment. Um, or Micro Center. Micro Center is really good over there in Sharonsville. But they have Micro Center all over the place, depending on where you're watching from. So just go to go to microcenter.com and see where they, you know, where their locations are. Uh, the reason why I would recommend Best Buy because they have a, a, a great return policy. Um, so if you're someone that, you know, buys a camera and like 20 days in, realize that the excitement isn't still there, right? Because impulsive buyers, we all have it in us where we're excited today and we want to go out and just swipe the card and get us equipment and you get home and then two weeks later, the equipment, you haven't touched it. Um, at that point, it, was, it probably was a, uh, it was a illogical purchase. So, um, you can bring it back, but yeah, I would recommend those four. So you got Best Buy for all this equipment. Then if you really want to focus on the, um, cameras and mics, Pro Cam or Dodd Camera, and then uh, Micro Center, they have really good prices there. Look at the background that we use in Zoom or whatever, or whatever. I could read papers on someone's desk one time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, do you have suggestions for alternative options if someone doesn't want the full investment? Absolutely, so the iRig Pre, that's a staple. No alternative for that one. Get the iRig Pre, it's like, mm, mm, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 bucks. ATM Mini, those are running around between four to 500 because there's an ATM Mini, there's an ATM Mini Pro, and then there's an ATM Mini that goes up another level. Um, and I think that's roughly around 900, 1,000 bucks. But the ATM Mini, I think is like 299. Um, the ATM Mini Pro is, I think it's around 500. The difference between the Mini and the Mini Pro is that it allows you to see all the, you could do a preview screen and you can see all your cameras at one time. So you can say, okay, I want to switch to camera two, I want to switch to camera four. So I recommend the ATM Mini. The Shure SM7B, they have alternative microphones. Um, I don't think I have any uh, down here, but I would recommend, they have the Audio-Technica mics and those are $99. They're called Podcasters. I think those are really good. They're all black, they got the, they come with the pop filter on it. So it kind of silences your P's. Right, that's what the pop filters for. Um, I would recommend that starting out. I want to recommend the show SM7B. Um, they, you know, they want to pro grade, pro grade as far as pricing, but if you're podcasting or blogging and just want to take your Zoom to the video comes to the next level, I get the Audio Technica podcasters. Those are um, those are $99. And then you got the Audio Technica headphones, you got the MX50s, right? These are the MX50s. Okay. And then you have, and they have the de detachable headphone cord. But then you have these. Then you have these, these are Audio Technica's um, M20s, M20s, right? Still great brand, great quality. And I think these are like $29.99, um, I believe so. But uh, I, would, I would definitely stick with the Audio Technica you have some people that use like Sennheiser, you know, but Audio Technica is, is, is what, you know, is what the people that know what they're doing are really using. I recommend those. As far as for the cameras, I'm showing you this because this is what I'm using today. I always get that question. What equipment do you use, right? But as far as Sony's, I recommend Sony is top of the line, but I don't think you need it. If you're fresh coming out the gate, you don't need an A7R2. I recommend like an A60, uh, A6400. Right, that's that's beginner quality. They have them at Best Buy. You can get the bundle. You can get the camera. You can get the lens. Between seven and eight hundred, that's a bargain, okay? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, I have a lens, a twenty four to seventy lens, and the aperture is two point eight, and that lens alone is almost three K, for the lens alone. 
So when getting into this camera space, this a whole this is a whole different master class. Okay, again, taking your taking your Zoom conference to the next level doesn't require you spending five ten thousand dollars. You can go get a nice camera bundle um, with the lens included for like seven eight hundred. Um, if you want to be a little bit more budget than that, you can go to somewhere like a Walmart. They have the Canon. I think they're the Canon T Rebels. Those run anywhere from four to five. But if you're spending four to five for that, you know, I would try to I would try to get the Sony for this for the seven to eight. Um, that that's just my my suggestion. But again, work within your budget. But you can still get ten times better quality with this DSLR camera than you will ever get with a computer. And it's just going to take your production to the next level. Tripod, tripod. My suggestion is make sure it's sturdy, right? You can find a nice one on Amazon, 50, 60 bucks. Make sure it's sturdy because you want to protect your investment because if the tripod falls and your camera's on it, I'm not care. I don't worry about the tripod. I'm more focused on the camera, right? And then your ring light, just go to Amazon and search for ring light. Look at the reviews. You can find those to be fairly expensive as well, okay? So those, those would be my suggestions um, as far as cameras. I would try to stay in that Sony family uh, but you have some people that like Nikon and Canon. Um, I've always used Sony, but you know, Canon is a good, Nikon is a good, but I'm just trying to find you an area where you can get both the lens and the camera all bundled in one package. Because if you start buying the body of the camera, because they sell separate and the lens separately, then that, you know, your price budget has to go a little bit higher. So great questions. All right. Let's go to the next spot. And then also computers, okay? Um, like I said, I'm using a MacBook Pro, which is ideal just for video editing and production and stuff like that, which your everyday video conferencing individuals is not doing. So I don't, you don't need a MacBook Pro. Um, if you have one, that's great. If you like Mac, you, when you're looking and investing into a Mac and you, to do this type of stuff, I recommend a, a MacBook Air. Um, you can get a, a really nice MacBook Air, I think like a 2019 or 2020 for a thousand dollars. Or if you're someone that's in the PC family, like HP, I mean, it's a really good HP or even Lenovo, Lenovo's, uh, which are really good laptops in the business and corporate world. And they all can pretty much do the same thing. Um, you want to start looking at your processor and make sure you have enough RAM, right? Um, on your computer because that has a lot to do with how well multiple software is running process information and the speed as well. So you wanna make sure you're getting a more up-to-date laptop just to risk not slowing your computer down. If you have a desktop computer and it's up-to-date, you should be good to go. Now here's the quick diagram. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's very, once you have all your equipment, it's very straightforward to get going. It's more in the software. So you're taking your PC that connects to your iRig, right? Then your iRig is where you plug your headphones in and you plug your mic in and that's done. So three cables, a USB to micro USB, a standard headphone jack, which comes with the headphones and the XLR cable, which you have to buy separate. And those come for like 10 to 15 bucks. And that's already set up. Okay. So now you got your mic working and you can use the mic without the, the ATM mini. You need the ATM mini to connect your cameras. So ATM mini, as I shared, it is connected by a simple USB-C cord. Okay, or USB-C to USB, depending on type of computer you have. And then you connect your camera to the back end of your ATM mini and you're ready to go. It's, it's one, two, three, four, five different cords and one out of five cords come with your headphones. And then the USB comes with the iRig. So you only have to purchase two cords, okay? And then your Joshua. tripod, yes. Um. And Jolly, I think, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. She, her question, or their question is, what RAM do you suggest to handle this equipment? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. You know, I would always, let me see what, what uh, right. So my, I have 16 gigs of RAM. To do all of this, I would definitely recommend nothing less than eight. If you get less than eight gigs, you know, you, you, you may have some, some lag when hooking all this stuff up. Um, but if you have at least eight, and your processor, you know, like an Intel Core i7, which you normally see on your computer, some of them come with the stickers on there, um, then you you should be you should be fine. But if you go anything lower than that, um, you may run into some lag issues. Great question. Okay. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to stop sharing that and I'm going to jump over to second. All right, now I'm going to share my desktop so you can see how ATM mini looks. Okay, so can everyone see my screen? Yes. yes. All right, perfect. So here's what eCam looks like, okay? Here's what it looks like. So here's where you have your different, maybe you have a PowerPoint. So this is a video that I've already uploaded to eCam, okay? I can switch to the PowerPoint. This is the PowerPoint that we just walked through, all right? Um, then here's an old slide that I had in crafting your pitch deck. This is something that we did a little while ago. And then I could switch to, well, before I do that, let me turn it on one second. Okay. So now I'm going to switch to the camera. All right. See me? Perfect. So that's the DSLR camera. That's the Sony. And I zoomed it out. So it's coming through the ring light, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to switch to the eCam live. So I'm going to switch from using my, um, my Zoom FaceTime camera to using the DSLR going through eCam. So let me stop share. You can tell I really like this stuff. And then I'm going to simply go to video settings and do Ecamm virtual. See me? Yeah. All right, so now you're looking at Ecamm streaming through Zoom. So now I'm not even doing nothing else with Zoom. I'm gonna jump over to Ecamm and let's do some stuff like this. Uh -huh. I'm in the distribution. I'm like Atlantic. Right? Did you hear that? So we got the sound effects going. You know, we can. Right? We in the building, ladies and gentlemen. If you're asleep, I hope you up. Okay, so you you and your Zoom webinar, you really showing out. You really showing off. Then okay, you want to switch from the camera. You want to go to the video. So let's go to the video. The best way to tell you about Influ is to tell you how I came up with the idea. Like okay. most of us, at a resolution. And we're going to go back, right? Because I did a pitch competition, and I'm in a pitch competition. I got stuff flying all over, and people are like, oh, I didn't do that. I'm showing you how we did it, OK? Um, maybe have a presentation. You do the same way. Now, you can share it on a different screen. Right now, I have, I have two monitors. It's easy for me to do it that way, because I can have Ecamm on one monitor, and then I can have my presentation on the other, so when I share it, I'm only sharing my presentation. I can see all my controls in the other one. Um, now, maybe, you know, you have your camera and you want to do a border. So you add a border, right? See, Zoom, you can't add borders. You can't even add names. You can see your name over the attendee list, but maybe you want to add, you have a speaker, maybe you want to add the name. Let's see. You can add the name. You see my name pop up? And Joshua, I have a question. I put a question in the chat. Yeah. Your vocals are not in sync with what we're seeing. Is there a reason why for that? Yeah, I'm glad you said that. So um, let me go back to, I'm going to switch off of this. All right, can you see me now? Yes. All right, perfect. Now let me go back and share my screen and walk you through how this stuff works. All right, can you see my screen? Yes. You see the ecamm. Okay, perfect. Now let's walk through how all this stuff works and vocal sync is very important uh, because you have what you call mic delay. Newscasters use it. They often using it to catch Maybe that's something they don't want to broadcast, right? And so if I delay it, I can cut it before it goes live. And Ms. Deborah, you know about this um, from your uh, production background. So here's where you're going to add all your different scenes. So I have my 
main camera, which is my Sony. I have my, you know, video, um, my PowerPoint and my title slide, and I can just switch back and forth from there. Then here's where you have all your overlays. Now, how I do the overlays in every single webinar I've referenced this, I make the overlays in Canva. So I go to Canva and I'll make a 1920 by 1080 overlay, um, or you can double it if you're doing HD and it'll fit right in, but you can also scale it as well. Um, and I'll have everything queued up down here at the bottom. Then we even have the logo, let's put this up here. So when, you know, when we're doing our webinars, I got the inback logo can pop up. Um, I can add my name, you know, I can even move my name as well, right? Wherever you want to put it. Um, and this is where you handle all your overlays. If you want to take the border off, you can just take the border off. Now here's where you handle all of your sound equipment. So right now the iRig is picking up my audio. Um, but I'm speaking through Zoom and my Zoom is coming through the system audio. So the thing is when you're using Ecamm, this is gonna tell you whatever mic you choose to use. So remember your, your SM7B goes through the iRig. This is telling you what that mic volume is. So if you wanna mute and not touch Zoom, just hit the mute button. You see the vocal stop moving, okay? I don't run anything through the Black Magic, which is the ATM Mini because it just distorts the audio. It doesn't sound as good. I just run it straight through the iRig. Um, but then the sound effects, you can mute that as well. Now, your question is about why doesn't the audio sync up with the mic? And that's because I don't use, typically use system audio when I'm when I'm using Ecamm, I'm using my SM7B. And you go into, let me see. Here's where you have your mic delay. Okay, um, and the mic delay with my SM7B is typically six frames. Okay, um, I would have to, and how you did, again, this is why you always practice before you present, because you want to do a couple of different test recordings. And the thing about Ecamm, you can do record only, which means I'm gonna do a test stream recording to my desktop or to my computer. And you can change the destination by going in this particular area. So you can do a record only, or like I said, you can directly stream out to Facebook, to Periscope, Twitch, YouTube, or a custom restream, which is a whole other workshop in itself. And that's if you're using something like, um, what is it called, Vimeo Pro? Uh, where you can use their streaming service, but you want to use Ecamm to stream it to Vimeo Pro, you can use this and this where you get your custom stream key and uh, and you will put it here. Let me show you. Add new stream key and this is where you will put your password and stuff like that. So then when you hit go live, it is streamed to wherever this is linked to. But again, a tutorial in Ecamm is webinar in itself, but I want to show you the basics of how to take it to the next level using Ecamm without diving into all the, you can, I mean, there's so much you could do with this. You can adjust the color, you can adjust the zoom, you know, the temperature of your video. I mean, you can really get fancy with this stuff. Um, but to the point of the audio delay, you want to add a mic delay. And let me just show you how it syncs up with the SM7B. I believe it's six frames. And let me, I got everything set out, black hole, can't, okay. Let me go back to here and switch. You can virtual. Now you can see me? Yes. And then let me switch my mic. All right, can you hear me? Yes. All right, is the audio synced up? Yes. Right, so if I take this off of, let me go back here, I'm gonna take the mic delay off. Now, how does the audio look? Test, 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 one, two, three. Is it Good. off? Is it off sync? No. It's not? Hmm. It doesn't look maybe, like it. Maybe if you watch me long enough, <laughs> it'll be off sync. 
Yeah, um, it's off sync. It's off, it's sync. off sync. So if I go, because you'd be surprised at, I mean, how much of a difference one frame and six frames. And for this new setup, I had to test it. I had to test it at one, two, three, and then eventually I got to six. And I said, well, let me just check seven. And seven was a little too fast. And then six was like that sweet spot. So let me put it back on. to six. All right, cool. So now the audio is back sync. So you just want to find whatever that sweet spot is. Now, when using any type of streaming service, you always have to, again, test. And because with a different mic, you know, if I use the podcast, the pro, it may be, I think the audio, the mic delay is three frames on that one. So you just got to test your equipment get it perfected, and then it doesn't change from there. And then when you set it up, it saves everything, it saves your profile, and you're good to go, okay? Now I'm gonna switch back to uh, my system audio. And my, uh, based on camera. All right. And then let me share the screen one more time. All right, cool. Everyone can see it again. Let me just do a post check. This is a, again, like I said, this is a lot of information. Um, your questions have been great so far. Are you following and understanding everything? Let me know in the chat. Anybody home? Anybody out there? Is, is it that good? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's a lot of information. Um, but again, this is on demand, so you can always come back and watch it. And again, what I, you know, what I do when I'm trying to learn something new is I have the webinar playing and then I have my screen going and I'm going back and forth. Right. And then eventually, you know, after you do it so many times, you all know, um, it becomes a creature of habit. Okay. Okay. Great. So there's, there's one. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are keeping up and you're getting it. There's one thing that, um, I want to discuss because it's Ecamm going into zoom. Audio going into Ecamm is very simple. I mean, video going into going from Ecamm to zoom is very simple. You want to come into Ecamm. Okay, and you want to turn your virtual cam because again, remember the ATM mini um, The ATM mini with the four different numbers on it. That is a webcam bringing your camera into the computer. Ecam you select that webcam. I showed you that. Now, how do you get that webcam in from Ecamm into Zoom? What you want to do is you want to come into your Ecamm when you download it, and they have a trial version as well. Again, you can go and play. I always suggest trial before purchasing. Even with our own software, we letting people try it right now. But when it's that good, people say, I just want to use it, and that's fine. Ecamm, I just bought it because I knew I, I wanted to use it. Um, but if you're practicing and trying to learn, then you can do the trial version. Turn your virtual cam on. Okay, when you turn your virtual cam on, it allows Zoom to then pick this up. So there's like one step, two step, three step. So your your ATM is going into your computer. Your your computer registers your ATM mini as a webcam. Your webcam then goes into eCam. Okay. Then you turn you go into eCam and you turn your virtual camera on. Now Zoom recognizes eCam. And now you can see your eCam camera coming to Zoom. So it's just one step after another is sequential. Uh, so once you turn your virtual cam on, right, you come into your Zoom settings, and where you see your camera, you can turn your camera on and off. You're going to click that down arrow next to it, and you're going to hit video settings, and you can see it there, or you'll just see it as an option. You'll see eCam e Live Virtual Cam. You want to select that, okay, and then you get what you're getting right now. You're getting the eCam Live. To turn it off, you just simply click that little down arrow next to the camera. 
and you click your FaceTime on the Mac. It's called FaceTime HD camera built in, and then it's going to take it back to my FaceTime camera. Okay. I'm Joshua, there's a question or a statement yeah. rather asking about a flow chart for what it is you're talking about. Do you have such a thing? Yeah. So the flow chart is the, the, um, the getting set up. Um, that This is a visual of what I'm saying. Um, okay. And yeah, I, that, you sh I shared that in, in the presentation. And I'll send that up to everybody. So this shares exactly how it's going to all work. Um, I'm just kind of showing you the mechanics. So when you go back and watch this, maybe you don't, you don't want to flip back 20 minutes and look for that slide. So I'm just kind of verbally taking you through it. But that flow chart is in the presentation. You'll get a copy of it as well. This is just how you know I, I like to teach. I repeat things so you don't have to keep going back in the on-demand video and trying to find what I said. Um, the last part I'm going to make that's an important piece. So now you know how the video works. Now you have to feed the audio from Ecamm into Zoom. Now this is what most people will not share with you because it's not something that's easy to find. You want to come into, you want to first go and I'll put this link into the deck as well. It's called your audio monitor. Okay. It's called Black Hole 16 channel. It's free. It's a free driver. I'm going to send, put the link in the deck where you can download this free driver. This allows Zoom to pick up the audio from Ecamm because that's the piece that a lot of folks don't figure out is the video is working, but I'm not getting audio. Where's the audio? Because you need this driver to pull audio from Ecamm into, into Zoom so your listeners can hear what you're saying through Ecamm. Once you download it, you're going to see an audio monitor. You're going to see Black Hole 16 channel right here. Okay. You want to select this and you're going to see a pop up right there. Okay. Now, when you go back into Zoom, you see where the mute button is. There's a microphone icon. Next to the microphone icon is a little arrow. You're going to click that arrow. It says select microphone. In select microphone, you're going to select Black Hole 16 channel. And that's how you get the audio from Ecamm. And remember, the audio coming into Ecamm is what? It's this beauty right here. Or whatever other microphone you use. Can you show us from Zoom's perspective, Joshua, to get the black hole? Um, um, I can't, because I can't uh, share. Unfortunately, you can't see the Zoom controls from uh, while I'm on Zoom. OK, OK. Um, Let me think. Let me try something. This wasn't part of the webinar, but let me try it. I just because if it doesn't work, I don't want you to think oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Let me let me just experiment right quick, okay? Um, let me. I'm going to. I'm going to go through Ecamm, and then I'm going to try to share my desktop of Zoom. Let's try to see if that works. Oh, okay. All right. Somebody said just do a screenshot. Okay, I can do that too. Let me let me just see if this works. One second. All right, you can see that? Did you see the pop-up? You see this up here? It say Windows? What is? What should it say up there? It says participants, stop video, mute. Do you see me switching between it? No. I can see it. Can oh, participant, you're in the Zoom. Okay, your, your cursor is a little too high. Okay, you're in the Zoom. Okay, participants, right. stop video, yeah. mute. Okay. Okay, okay, yes, I see it. Okay, all right, so now I'm showing you Zoom, all right? So this works. So then, you know, this you try things, okay? So when you want to select the Black Hole 16 channel, after you download the driver for the link I'm going to send you, you're going to come here, you're going to hit this down arrow. You see that? And then you're going to select 
Black Hole 16 channel right here. Okay, can you all see that? No, I don't see Black Hole 16 channel. I just screenshot it. We lost your audio. All right, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to desktop. Okay. Can you see these screenshots right here? Yes. All right, so when you click, see a little arrow next to your camera? Mm-hmm. You're gonna hit Ecamm Live Virtual Cam. Mm hmm Okay. And then when you click this one, and you wanna select your audio after you download the driver, you're gonna hit this little arrow next to mic. You're gonna select Black Hole 16 channel. That means whatever audio is going into Ecamm is now coming through Zoom. If you get to the point where what just happened, you couldn't hear me, that's because you need to go, you need to switch back in Zoom, switch from Black Hole 16 channel to same as system. And then you can hear yourself again. Okay. okay. And we kind of uh, went through, uh, okay, we went through integrating music Ecamm Live, adding graphics and sound effects to webinar, how to professionally add an interview a guest live on this. Now, this is very simple. Um, and we can cover it in the next three minutes. So let me go back to Ecamm Live and just open it back up. All right, everyone can see. Now, when you're in here, you simply, you see this little arrow right here? Um, It's a little icon. It's like it says interview. There's like two emoji heads together. And this box pops up down here in the bottom right. It says interview. You're going to copy this link. Okay. You're going to send that link to your guest. So, Ms. Deborah, I'm going to send this to you right quick in the chat. You get it? Yes. Yeah. So what happens is what Ms. Deborah's gonna do, she's gonna click that link and it's gonna take her to a screen and it's gonna say, Do you want to share your camera? You share your cam your camera, and then you're gonna pop up into the eCam Live, which can stream to Zoom. And so that's how you can get a little bit more fancy. Um, we're bringing guests into Zoom by way of eCam, as opposed to guests coming into Zoom and you not being able to do all the fancy things that I just showed you. And, um, and it's that simple. So that part right there is it's very straightforward. It's, the, it's actually, in my opinion, a little bit more simpler than, than Zoom because the guest doesn't have to download Ecamm in order to use it. With Zoom, when you're bringing the interviews, they got to download Zoom, they got to create a profile and everything. With Ecamm, all they need is that link and they can get directly into your live presentation. So um, that is the gist of this entire presentation. Is there any questions? No, it's a lot of information, but again, this is on it's on demand, so you can always come back and replay it and um, and follow step by step. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to Miss Deborah, and uh, she would definitely share those questions with me to make sure that they get answered. So, any questions? Oh, absolutely! I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Like I said, this is a very fun topic for me. 
um, you know, everything that I'm showing you guys today is what allowed me to, you know, get to start my first startup company, which was uh, almost seven years ago. And uh, so I'm glad you found it useful. Again, don't be hard on yourself. It takes time. There's a lot of, there's a lot of wires, a lot of connections, but once you get it, once you follow the diagram and you get it, the thing is like riding a bike, you got it for good. Um, and you always have it. So even if you step away from it for a while, as soon as you see it configured, like, oh, I remember how to do everything. Um, and again, if you have any questions, always reach out to Ms. Deborah at the Impact Minority Business Assistance Center and they'll get that to me. We make sure you get the help where it's needed. So Joshua, can you send me the PowerPoint with the, the flow of how things should be connected so I can send it out to people? Uh, yes, let's do that. Let me, uh, that's our software company, .com. and then let me do this right now. I'm gonna drop it in the chat. Don't go anywhere. I'm about to drop into the chat. I'm just saving it. Oh, I can't add it because I'm not the host. Well, Ms. Deborah, I send it to you and then yeah, um, you just send it to me and I'll send it out to everybody. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Well, that concludes our advanced video conferencing today. I'd like to thank Joshua Reed, CEO and founder of Influ, for facilitating this uh, webinar and all the webinars to come. Uh, if you are interested in our future webinars, um, you can just let me know. I can send out all that information to you. I think I have in the past. I can certainly resend it. Uh, this will be on demand. So as soon as I get the link from Zoom, I will be forwarding it out to everyone who participated and those who signed up as well who were not able to participate today. So again, thank you for joining us. I'm Deborah Davis, Regional Director of the Minority Business Assistance Center. And um, again, thank you, Joshua Reed, for facilitating this workshop, this webinar. And thank all of our participants for joining us today. Please uh, share the word with uh, your colleagues or family and friends and let them know that these are free webinars um, that are technical webinars that can help them in um, growing their business. So please share that information with them. Thank you again. Have a great day. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye, everyone.